Hello everyone, welcome back to HyperPets tutorial 3. Today we'll be talking about layers as requested and if you have any other requests, do submit it to our email or just DM us and we will read it. Today's tutorial will actually be narrated by Natasha who will also be narrating next month's entire tutorial on how to make your own multiplayer game on HyperPad. Hello everyone, today I'll be discussing layers and how to best utilize them when creating a game with the HyperPad app. There are two types of layers, UI layers and our normal layers. As you can see, I've already created two layers, one called main and one called background. You can create a new layer by just tapping this plus icon and assigning it a name. And as well, by clicking this gear icon, I can delete layers or edit the names of layers. Layers are basically sets of objects that can be stacked on top of each other. One use for layers is to control visibility. For example, I have a background layer which contains the background and a bunch of coins, and I have a main layer which contains the player and the ground. As you can see, there was a coin behind the player. Because the layer the coin was on is behind the layer the player was on, you don't see the coin when the player layer is visible. I can control the order of these layers by tapping and holding, and then dragging where I want the layers to be. So now my background layer is on top of my main layer and you can't see the player anymore. I'll just move that back. Another use for layers is to control which objects can interact with each other. So for example, if I play the game, so you can see my player doesn't pass through the ground because the player and the ground are on the same layer, but my player does pass through the coins because they are on different layers and therefore do not interact with each other. Another important thing to note is as I'm moving, my screen is following the player, but the three hearts in the corner and the joystick don't follow the player as the screen moves. This is because if I go back, you can see those three hearts and the joystick are on the scene UI layer. The scene UI layer is just a layer that contains objects that stay on the screen and don't move even if you have follow player set. Finally, we have our global UI layer. If I set this to visible, you can see I have a global label. Objects in the global UI layer are shared between scenes. So I have a global label in this scene, and if I go to a different scene, you can see the global label appears here too. So the global UI and the scene UI layers appear in your project as soon as it's created, but you can create these layers as many times as you want. Finally, another important thing to note is that while it's important to make sure you're working in the right layer, if you accidentally put an object in the wrong layer, you can transfer it over. So for example, let's say I want to move this player object. I can use the select tool select the player, tap and hold, cut, then navigate to the background layer, use the stamp tool, and put the player back in. So as you can see, I just moved the player from the main layer to the background layer, and if I click on the player and go to behaviors, all of the behaviors are still there. So while it's important to note that you can move objects between layers, you cannot move behaviors between objects. So it's just a good thing to note to remember you're working in the right layer on the right object when creating your game. Thank you for tuning in to this Thursday's tutorial. So another special thing about today's tutorial is that I'm actually wearing HyperPads hoodie. And if you want one of your own, don't forget to tag us on Instagram and win one of your own. Hashtag October 2020 is going to be ending soon, so don't forget to submit your work on HyperPad as well as tag us on Instagram and show us what you've got. I hope to see you all next week for the tutorial on how to make a multiplayer game on HyperPad. Thank you!